Stanton. We were the new kids on the block. And uh, the parish was kind of in shambles when we arrived, and so many different ways, but it was one saving feature. We had a tremendous principal. This lady right next to me here, her name's Franz. She was great to work with, a tremendous uh, person for the school, and uh, so many great memories of my early days here. And I was, uh, wore a younger man's clothes and had a younger man's weight, too. So. <laughs> Well, let's begin the celebration of Sister Elaine Franz in life in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be always with you. Amen. Many moons ago, uh, when she was at St. Teresa's, I believe she was baptized there. Am I correct? I would imagine so. It sounded like everything was going on there in her early days of life. But at that baptism, she began her spiritual journey brought her now to this church, her final step of the journey in this life, but she's going to begin another journey, of course, in the life to come. But on that day, we baptize her. So in the waters of baptism, Elaine died with Christ and rose with him to new life, so may she now share with him eternal glory. And also on that baptismal day, she wore a white gown, and this funeral pall is representative of that gown she wore many years ago. On the day of her baptism, Elaine put on Christ. On the day of Christ's coming, may she be clothed. journey of faith, of course, to bring her to becoming a member of the Mercy Sisters, and uh, we're now going to place upon her remains here the cross, a symbol of the Mercy community. Lord Jesus Christ, you have loved us unto death. May this cross be a sign of the love you have for Sister Elaine and for all of us here. Let us pray. Well, Lord, we thank you for the revelation of yourself in the lives of others, especially our friend, Sister Elaine Franz, whom we've come to honor here today, for her love of Jesus Christ and the church, for her radiant, kind spirit, for her wisdom, her courage, her unselfish deeds, her jovial soul. We thank you, Heavenly Father. By your promise, you call her to be with you in the larger life beyond this one. And we are comforted by the assurance that that which has brought us to sorrow has meant release and peace to our loved one, Elaine. So cheered by these hopes, Lord, we believe. Though we will not see her anymore, she's safe with you. She's at rest from her labors. She's relieved of any anguish. And she's now at peace. As we pray and we believe through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
a reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a valiant woman, her value is far beyond pearls. Her people, entrusting her heart to her, have an unfailing prize. They are prominent at the city gates. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs at the days to come. She opens her mouth in wisdom, and on her tongue is kindly counsel. Many are the women of frozen worth, but few have excelled them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors, and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. The refrain is, Shepherd me, O God. God is my shepherd, so nothing I shall want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. You have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Second reading is a reading from the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heavens and the former earth has, had passed away and the sea was no longer. I also saw a new Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down out of heaven from God, beautiful as a bride prepared to meet her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne of God cry out, this is God's dwelling place among the people. Our God, God shall dwell with them and they shall be known as the people of God, and their God shall always be with them. God shall wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, crying out in pain, for the former world has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said to me, See, I make all things new. Then the Holy One said, Write these matters down, for the words are trustworthy and true. He went on to say, These words are already fulfilled. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To anyone who thirsts, I will give a drink 
I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the life-giving water. The one who wins the victory shall inherit these gifts. I will be your God, and you shall be my servant. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. My Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, well, I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and will take it to myself so that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas says, Lord, we have no idea the where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. large and majestic and uh, stately trees gets cut down. It's very noticeable because an open space appears where once a lot of activity took place. And its absence comes as a great loss to a great many. It comes as a great loss to the farmer. We cut it on that tree for needed shade for the particular vegetables he had hoped to plant comes as a great loss to the artist who often sought out that tree as a backdrop for her paintings. comes as a great loss to the traveler who would often seek out that tree to get himself out of the burning sun. comes as a great loss to the children who house their clubhouse on one of its branches and from another hung a swing. Birds and squirrels and assorted small animals feel a great loss because many a nest was housed in the nooks and crannies of that tree and many a cache of food was also there to get animals through the winter months. Whenever one of those large and stately and majestic trees gets cut down, a lot feel sad and a great many feel a great loss. But the good news, however, is that after that tree's remains gets sent to the lumber yard, it comes back to life again, it manages to live on. Because you see, builders and manufacturers and artists and carpenters will, will go to that lumber yard and then from the dead wood of that tree will come objects of great use and great delight, especially for those who had mourned its absence. Objects like those tools the farmer needed to take care of his plantings or the clapboards he might have needed to build that new barn. Objects like Lincoln logs, baseball bats, skateboards, which children will buy to entertain them for hours on end. And the dead wood of that tree 
They will come objects like that exquisite piece of art, compliments of an artist's carvings, or the wooden shelter built for weary travelers, or that birdhouse or feeding station built to the delight of birds and, and, and squirrels and other assorted young members and small members of the animal kingdom. When a large, stately, and majestic tree dies and gets cut down, it comes back to life again. It manages to live on, and much consolation is provided for those who mourn its absence. Well, Sister Elaine Franz is gone. A great void has entered many a life. A big loss, of course, is felt by many. South Buffalo feels a great loss. You see, Elaine was a native son, in her case, of course, native daughter. She grew up uh, over at St. Teresa's. She was, went to school there. She was baptized there. She graduated from the school. And for her high school, all she did was walk across the bridge where all the rich kids and rich families lived. <laughs> and would go over to Mercy Academy, eventually landing up in Trocare for one of her degrees. She ended up teaching here at St. Ambrose, over there at Holy Family. Like so many South Buffalo natives, she seldom ventured past Clinton Street. Elaine Franz did South Buffalo proud, and I believe that you could say that when Elaine died, South Buffalo lost one of its best. And besides South Buffalo feeling a great loss, so many a person who grew up in this area they feel a great loss. And they do so because Elaine was one of their teachers. Or Elaine was the principal of the school where they went. You see, Elaine had a perfect combination of being stern but being kind, being funny but being serious, being smart but not being arrogant, being strict but, not, but being fair. So that enabled her not only to learn the respect of all the kids she taught or the teachers whom she was the leader of, but also gain her the love of those kids that she taught and those teachers under whose uh, leadership she, she was, was their leader. I forget who told me this, but uh, she did venture at least to Clinton Street because she was at St. Bernard's for a couple of years. And, and as was usual for Elaine, endear yourself, endear yourself to everybody, and especially to the kids. And it was a trip to Washington. She said, I don't know how you, if you're teach, I don't know how your teachers ever took kids to Washington. <laughs> I remember when we went to New York as a high school kid, and the, and the havoc we, 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 uh, we engineered back then in the 60s. I couldn't imagine going to Washington with all these kids. And so anyway, she was supposed to go, and she got sick. And the kid was so disappointed that she wasn't coming with them. That they wanted to buy a plane ticket for her in case she got better in the next couple of days they could join them in Washington. Many an individual born in this community feel a great loss when Elaine died because many if not all would have said she was the best teacher I ever had. And many would say she was the best principal I ever had. The Mercy community, of course, feels a great loss because, of course, Elaine was one of their best. A natural leader, she rose within the ranks of the Mercy community. Twice elected to the Mercy community leadership team and director of continuing education over Chilcut College. And she did one heck of a job assuming a supervisory role in the renovation of the Mercy Center. She did such a bang up job that she was acclaimed by the project manager and the project architect. As the reason the place was put together the way that it did. She throughout that time, she made sure no corners were cut made sure the workers never stepped out of line. 
And the, she, she was able to uh, make sure that the contractor lived up to the bargain for what they wanted done at the Mercy Center. And many would comment that her patented uh, electric smile was responsible for the morale of the workers who went to work there happy to do so, thanks to Elaine Franz. When you think of it, she did such a, a great job, but had she decided to leave the Mercy community and get into the construction trade, <laughs> imagine a mega buck she'd be making, huh? <laughs> she would beach that $100 a month the Mercy's pay them. <laughs> Elaine would also then be tapped as the leader or the supervisor, I'm not sure what the title might have been, of that very place that was renovated. And of course, that had to be a very difficult task because many of the sisters didn't want to leave Orchard Park. <laughs> they just sort of stayed there. And so she had to deal with the realities of moving sisters back and coordinating their living condition, dealing with, of course, all the things that happen when they have a new place. You know, the plug doesn't work, the water's not running right. So you can imagine being in charge and dealing with all those issues, but she did so, and did so wonderfully. And she held that position, mind you, for 11 years. Elaine was, if she was in the Army, <laughs> her rank would put her in the general category. <laughs> and besides her leadership skills, the Mercy community also appreciated Elaine's willingness to uh, contribute to the life of the Mercy community within that building that she had supervised, the building of. She planned prayer services, provided guidance to many sisters, participated in local community affairs, which often would call for a mercy presence. So it could well be said that uh, with Elaine's death, the mercy community feels a great loss. And so does the Franz family feel a great loss. So does Sister Angela Marie feel a great loss. And so did the Mastrangia, sorry, screwing up the Mastrangia, whatever, anyway, that last name, you guys all know it. <laughs> the Shastall family. They'll miss her wit, they'll miss her love to have fun, they'll miss her love for parties, her love for playing cards, her winning and contagious smile, her kindness, her love for the good things of life, and just her overall love for all whom she was close to and near. Elaine Franz has died. Many are feeling a great loss. Big void has entered many a heart. Many are missing her. Many are mourning her loss. But like that tree that died and was sorely missed, like that tree whose loss was mourned by many. It's not going to be the last we will see of Elaine Franz because her life is not over. Her life continues on. It continues on in a world where peace and happiness eternally reigns, where pain and suffering is no more, the place in which the Holy Spirit said, I has not seen nor ear heard nor has it entered the hearts of people to know what the Lord has prepared. In that place, she'll meet up with all of those people who preceded her in death. And Elaine Franz's life also continues on in our memories. And the memories will stay with us till the day when we join her in God's eternal kingdom. Elaine's life continues on in all the places that she frequented, all the places where she left her mark, and most especially, Elaine's life will continue on and all those whom she loved in life because they will forever bear the imprint of that love within their hearts <coughs> and within their souls. God used Elaine's life when she walked among us. God used it to better this world. So we make it a point, therefore, to carry on for her and in her name help better this world as well. 
because in so doing, will not only further her legacy, but will also make sure that she'll never be forgotten. Now, I always like that story from Italy, <clears throat> the French town shark and the great cathedral was being built. Arriving at the end of the day, this gentleman came to the site just as the workers were prepared to leave. He asked one man covered with dust, asked him what he did there. The man replied that he was a stonemason. He spent his days carving stones. Another man, when asked what he was doing, said he was a glass blower, spent his days making colored glass. A traveler from Italy asked us still another person what he did. He said he was a blacksmith who found an iron for a living. Then wandering deeper into the work site of the unfinished cathedral, the traveler came upon an older woman. She was armed with a broom. She was sweeping up the stone chips and the wood shavings and the glass charts. He asked her what she did. The woman paused for a moment, leaned on the broom, looked up at the high arches that had been set in place. She says to the traveler, I'm building a cathedral for the honor and the glory of God. Had you asked Elaine Front so what she did, she said, well, I was a teacher. I was a principal. I was a project manager. I was the head of the Mercy Center. I was a director of continuing education. I was a leader within the Mercy community. But the truth is that in each and every one of those roles, that Elaine Franz took on in her lifetime, what she was actually doing was building cathedrals, human cathedrals, because so many of the lives she touched in the schools where she taught, in the schools where she was a principal, in the convents where she lived, or in the leadership position that she took on, so many of the lives she touched her shining brighter today. So many of the lives she touched have become beacons of God's grace. So many of the lives she touched are bigger and better and greater thanks to the impact Elaine Franz had upon their life. They've become human cathedrals for the greater honor and glory of God and inspire them. Our response today is, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That the leadership of our church and nation be graced with the vision to seek the common good and the conviction to act on behalf of those who are powerless, especially women and children, we pray to the Lord. That all people who mourn, especially those who have lost loved ones due to the coronavirus, Find consolation and peace in God through those around them, we pray to the Lord. 
for Sister Elaine, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she be admitted to the company of the holy women and men who now sing God's praise in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Elaine was an educator, supervisor, leader, and organizer who shared her gifts in so many ways. She loved cards, games, highlighters, and fun times. May her gifts be extended to those she leaves behind. We pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of Sister Elaine's parents, Bob and Veronica, and for Maureen Franz and Thomas Sadler, and all members of her family who have gone before her, we pray to the Lord. For Elaine's brother Bob and sister Sharon, Mary Ellen, and Carol, that they may be comforted knowing she is now free from pain and limitations, and look forward to reunion with her in heaven, we pray to the Lord. For all sisters of mercy, living and dead, that God may bless and comfort them, we pray to the Lord. In gratitude for those who were part of her life, whom she loved and cherished, especially Ange Mastandria, we pray to the Lord. For all of us assembled here in faith to pray for Elaine, that God's mercy and love will continue to shine on us and through us, we pray to the Lord.
these gifts might be pleasing and acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Elaine may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. And we pray that through Christ our Lord. just a duty for our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. In Him, Jesus Christ, the hope of blessed resurrection is dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. And he, for your faithful people, our life is changed and not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, the eternal dwelling made ready for them in heaven. And so the angels and the archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as it out and we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. By sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they might become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The night before he died, Jesus took bread, and he said the blessing, and he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Supper was ended, he took the chalice, and again giving thanks and praise, he gave it to his disciples. He said, take this all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. And it will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let's proclaim now in song this mystery of our faith. Thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring it in the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember your servant, Elaine Franz, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who plead you throughout the ages, we may merit to become heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. God who said to us, Whoever believes in me, even though they die, shall live. Happy are we, sold by that message. Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
I saw you getting tired when Kara was not to be. So he put his arms around you and whispered, come to me. With tearful eyes, we watched you and saw you pass away. Although we loved you dearly, we could not make you stay. The golden heart stopped beating, hard working hands at rest. God broke our hearts to prove to us he only takes the best. God looked around in his garden and found an empty place. He then looked down upon the earth and saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and lifted you to rest. God's garden must be beautiful. He always takes the best. He saw the road was getting rough and the hills were hard to climb. So you closed your weary eyelids and whispered, peace be thine. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you didn't go alone. The part of us went with you. The day God called you home. Not sure if that's Irish or not. <laughs> Cute. Prayer is now ended, and we bid our last farewell. There is sadness in the heart. But it should fill us with new hope. For one day we'll see our sister again and enjoy her love. Let us comfort one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Let us commend her to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace her. Your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Elaine, and sure in certain hope that together with all who died, died in Christ to arise with them on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon your servant Elaine in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant. Help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith. So we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister Elaine forever. And this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen.